This is episode 41, titled Parenting Consciously, Simplicity Parenting, with Martina Lynn. And when it comes to parenting, our society and world has changed so much in the last 50 years. Martina Lynn follows the practices of simplicity parenting and has created a path of support for herself and her community, showing families how to have more connected time with what is important to them, their family. Today on the AlternativeHealthTools.com podcast, where together we discover and share new alternative health tools and resources from alternative healthcare practitioners and experts. I really a firm believer, um, even for myself, that my children are my teacher. They help me and they, they inspire me on how can I be more aware and how can I be more authentic because I really believe that the more I can be authentic and the more I can be inspired by my children, then I mm-hmm. can be a better parent for them and also a better role model for them as well. Welcome back, everyone, to AlternativeHealthTools.com, the podcast. And today we have Martina Lynn. And Martina's got a website called CircleOfChanges.com. And Lisa Thorpe highly recommended you. And um, your website's really, really great. So welcome. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm honored to be here. Yeah, well, it's great to have you. I mean, it really rounds out this show. You know, it's just really great because there's a lot of people listening to it that are, you know, have young children. How did you meet Lisa, actually? Um, I was running and facilitating Simplicity Parenting class at that time in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And um, Lisa was looking. She was somehow was really interested with with, uh, Simplicity Parenting. And that's Mm -hmm. how we found each other. So for this show, who would you say you might would find most interested in it in terms of the content and what what uh, what you have to say? In other words, who are the people that you typically work with? I typically work with parents, mm-hmm. and um, most most of them are moms um, when it come to um, in classes, and but definitely. Parents who are looking into how to slow down their life Hmm. and how to have more connected time together with families and and loved ones. So basically parents who are looking at a different way, I guess, of looking at life and family life and parenting and how to, you know, parents who are looking at to create more connections and 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 really look into value what's important for their family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's a very busy, distractive world. So this is like a service that I'm sure is really well needed, huh? It is. I mean, our you know with the internet and with the social media mm-hmm. and with our mobile device nowadays, it's so much easier to connect and just find all kind of information. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it is also very overwhelming for most of us mm-hmm. because it kind of, unfortunately, I think the culture and the society kind of have moved into the way of how can we do more and how can we move faster. Mm-hmm. And it's overwhelming for you know us adults and, and parents and not even thinking about, you know, for children, Mm -hmm. children who are also usually are more in tune with the surrounding environment, um, more so that it's really adding additional, um, almost like um, overwhelming Mm -hmm. sense for the children. You're, You're basically dealing with parents that are overwhelmed. So what is it you typically, you know, help people with or help them with? I typically, um, in the class setting, what we do is we will, we look at family life and mm-hmm. it depends. So overall, what I would love, what I want to share with parents are 
just kind of cultivating a different perspective of looking your life and your family life. Mm-hmm. And how can you look at with a different set of eyes and, and simplify? Mm-hmm. By simplifying, you know, not just about uncluttering or clear, you know, clear coloring in your environment, but also looking at building a rhythm in your life, in your daily life, mm-hmm. and also looking at your schedule. How can you really be conscious and present about when we're scheduling our time and mm-hmm. that make sure those times are valuable for the parents and also for the family. Mm-hmm. So we look at, and the other really big thing, um, which is I had talked about earlier, is about the the internet, the booming of the internet is really about how can we filtering out the adult world so that, um, you know, the child can, you know, can just have, be in an environment that it's appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's news or things happening in the world that how can we filter those out and so that we only share what is appropriate and necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, Like the author of Simplicity Parenting, King Zhang Peng, he had uh, talked about in his book um, about this particular area, how, you know, he said, these are the questions the parents we should ask ourselves is it necessary mm-hmm. is it kind and if it's no for any of those then we should not share and we should filtering out for our children interesting yeah i am basically raised in the 50s and the 60s and during that time i remember my mother was a stay at home mom it was very typical i think for that time and but at some point she took a job a part time job as you know working in a working in a school and at some point, I, I really remember the shift when it, it when she went to work and I, I came home and, and she wasn't there, mm. it, you know, and things have changed quite a bit. And it's, um, you know, I think with the advent of computers and stuff, because I've worked with them a really long time, one thing that was said is that, ah, oh, with the advent of computers, we're going to have a lot more time, which <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure is really true. What do you think I about am, that? <laughs> I agree with you. Um, I think time is really how we managing it. Mm-hmm. Yes, with the computer and internet is making things much more efficient. Like I have families in Taiwan and it's oh. so nice that I can connect with them through Facebook or using an app on iPhone, for example. And mm-hmm. we can connect and share photos that I you know, in the past, I wouldn't able to do when I first moved to the United States. Mm-hmm. I would be writing letters, mm-hmm. and I would be, have to print out the photos I want to share with them. Mm-hmm. So that's the beauty of of really the internet is allowing around the world everyone to connect. But also, it's very confusing as well because there's all kind of information. Um, how do we know, you know, the truth and the integrity of those information? Mm-hmm. Um, Great question. Yeah, and it is also very hard even for us to navigate that and not to mention for our children as well. Martina, so how do you navigate the information on the Internet? You know, I don't really, (laughs) I don't claim that I have a a good answer answer, for that and really a true answer for that. Mm -hmm. But for me, for myself, you know, I... I am a researcher type of person. Mm-hmm. So when I read a piece of information, I try to go and see what else do I find. Mm-hmm. Um, but the main thing is, at the end of the day, after I read all those information, I sit down and then I connect with my values. Mm. You know, I connect with the values of my family and I connect what's my truth. And then from there... It kind of opens up the space and the clarity on, okay, how should I process information I just read? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like really overwhelmed and sometimes I just said, okay, I'm just going to let it sit Mm -hmm. and then just kind of let it integrate as part of my being or my, my thoughts and consciousness and see how I feel a week later. And maybe there is time that I need to make a decision right away. Um, I, what I do is I just sit and 
meditate. I'd, I've been practicing meditation for the past 12 years. Mm-hmm. And so I have learned this habit of when I was trying to processing information or when I'm, you know, whether I'm doing learning or research or thinking about how can I better support my clients or how do I better teach the class, I allow those information to kind of thinking and being part of me. Mm-hmm. And then I can kind of slowly digest and then kind of put it out together. So that's a part of your strategy is to give yes. yourself time to let it absorb and maybe yes. even apply some critical thinking to it. Would you say mm-hmm. that's true? Yes, yeah, because I think, you know, sort of getting back to the Internet, and we didn't talk too much about cell phones, but they're always on. And, uh, you know, I, I'm t- I've been taking a stance lately of not, not reacting as much and actually um, not allowing so much distraction to come into my life so that, um, that I'm distracted from what's really important. And to me, what's really important is uh, just being consciously aware of even what my thoughts are. So in, in terms of how this relates to parenting, so part of it is it sounds like you're an advocate for helping adults with children to, to get healthier themselves, which, of course, it seems to me probably gets communicated to the children in an indirect way. Yes. I really a firm believer, um, even for myself, that my children are my teacher. Mm. They help me and they they inspire me mm-hmm. on how can I be more aware and how can I be more authentic. Mm-hmm. And because I really believe that the more I can be authentic and the more I can be inspired by my children, then I mm-hmm. can be a, bear, a better parent for them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and also a better role model for them as well. Mm-hmm. Nice. So you've uh, also developed quite a community of support, haven't you? I have. I've been very lucky that uh, over the years I have met um, quite a bit of like my parents and we share and support and learn from each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is really important. I'm I'm on the website right now on the uh, community page with the Circle of Changes events and the Community for Conscious Parents. That's an example of um, some of the support you give. Yes, definitely, because I really feel, especially the way how our society is structured now, because like when I was growing up, I remember, you know, my grandmother would be living next door, my yes. uncle's family would be next door, so you have family that you grow up together, but now in the way how the society is structured now, you don't really have those luxury mm-hmm. of being in, sometime even in the same city or same mm-hmm. town as your immediate family. Mm-hmm. And so you really need to, I call it, you know, reach out and be in, in build extent of family mm-hmm. because I really feel like it takes a whole village to raise children. Mm-hmm. And it's a much better way to do it than, than just, you know, two parents or one parent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's somebody I know quite well, which I really love a lot. Um, his name is Attila, and Attila is a, a part of um, several, a couple different organizations that, yeah, yeah, including um, an organization called uh, Boys to Men. So, what's happened in the last 30, 40 years is there's so many boys that have not had a father figure in their life. Mm. You know, the mentoring is not going on, there's no relationship. So, part of what this organization does, which I think is really great, is take these boys and uh, establish values in terms of mentoring as a man. So it may not be exactly what you're into, but um, in terms of but what that's you- Yeah, that's a really a beautiful example because I really feel there is a, a wisdom mm-hmm. that can pass on from, mm-hmm. you know, in your example, father figure. And, or maybe there's some specific group for, for girls mm-hmm. because I feel like it really, there is the wisdom that is passing down from generation and generation that... Yes. Um, it really helps strengthening our um, our inner inner landscape, where and that's really I feel for children nowadays, especially very important is is how do we help the children to feel comfortable and and um, in their own being mm-hmm. with with a world and society nowadays with so much noises mm-hmm. around, and it's really hard to know what's mine, what's you, and and um, 
And I felt one way it's really connecting to organization or to have a tradition and wisdom like that. It's really uh, a key and very important. There's a couple different things that I become aware of in the last six months, um, which really shifts, um, sort of shifts a perspective back to children and instead of using praise and blame, mm. basically asking the child how they feel about it so that, they, mm. so that they own it. So there's no comparing going on. And so, you know, they learn to express themselves more. Yes. Yeah. And it also helps them, you know, depends on the age, you know, mm-hmm. some age, like when uh, my older daughter, she's turning 11 very soon. So she's at this age that she can really articulate better about what mm-hmm. she's feeling. But, you know, for my younger child, she's not quite there yet. Uh-huh. And so there's a different way that our parents that we can do to facilitate or allow that, you mm-hmm. know, for them to have, like for the younger child, I would recommend that just kind of listen and just hold them with, you know, just kind of hold them energetically, mm-hmm. you know, being there with them, being fully present. And that's sometimes a lot of time that's all they need. But with the older child, you can start having a little bit of dialogue, like how you had described. Mm-hmm. How do you really feel? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, how do you feel? It doesn't make any difference how I think about it or feel. How do you feel about it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, a lot of time, you get really surprising answer. <laughs> <laughs> that you're like, oh, I didn't think of that. That's uh, okay. Uh-huh. That's very insightful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fun. So, for most of the people you work with, what would you say are like the top three challenges that are pretty common for for parents and parents trying to be more conscious in parenting? I'm going to say um, number one thing is really about the busyness, the time, mm-hmm. not enough time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that is really yeah. one challenge, not enough time for, yeah, because I often um, parents would come to either my, cl- my classes or, mm-hmm. or work with me are about they just feel exhausted and overwhelmed mm-hmm. and they don't really know how to finding that balance of um, family time, personal time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And that was one. And the other one is um, they just want to be a better parent. And, you know, especially in terms of a a disciplinary area Mm -hmm. or just kind of, and that was another really a a key. And, um, And the number three... I would say for most parents that I run work with is really about I noticing is really about inside of themselves that they are looking it's almost like um it's kind of like related to the second fear about how can I be a better parent but also in there is really also having that desire the parents has is how can I feel more fulfilled and for themselves? Uh-huh. Um, even for a parent, because there is really a reality that sometimes when you're so um, being in the role of being a parent that you feel like you, you're lost. You know, you're lost and you can't really find yourself in it. And sometimes that's really difficult for a lot of us that when you can't, you know, you, you lost yourself into it and that you you just feel like completely stuck. And that's another thing that I, I feel that I'm noticing, including myself, because, you know, it, it is a very sacred and very intense mm-hmm. being a parent um, because it really literally turns your life upside down and you yes. really have to constantly go inside to say, how can I do things differently Mm -hmm. and a lot of time that we just kind of get drowned in it Mm -hmm. um and it really yeah and when you're drowned in it you just feel like you're stuck and that's some parents that when i feel that that's where they are it's because they're they have certain desires or a passion that are not necessarily relating to being a parent Mm -hmm. That was, was not really fulfilled and not feeling mm-hmm. satisfying. Do you, do you feel like a lot of that um, um, lack of self-fulfillment or feeling lost 
comes from certain lack of family support. And to just give you an example, I have a good friend of mine who's he's American, and but his wife is from Brazil. So when she was getting ready to birth her second child, their second child, the whole family, not the whole, but most of the family from Brazil came over and stayed. Wow. Yeah, stayed for a couple months to help and be supportive. Like we're talking sister, mother, and I think a cousin. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. Yes, that's, that's actually a, a, another great example. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I think having a support like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I was... Um, my mother was really wonderful that she will come and stay with me for at least a month and my sister to come and help me nice. um, because that's really a, a great transition. It's really a, a transition time mm-hmm. for the mother and, you know, for dad and also for the newborn baby as well. Mm-hmm. And um, that is definitely having that um, and having really building a whether it's your immediate family mm-hmm. or an extended family in your community, in your local community, is really helpful because then you have support and help with raising your children together and that which also comes in great to that so you can allocate more of your personal time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for parents uh, who has desires um, or mm-hmm. passion about it's different activities like for me i you know i i was really i have been really passionate about meditation and so at time i need you know i really wanted i remember when my first child was born i really wanted to go and and take the meditation classes from my school and mm-hmm. which is i will be gone for a week mm-hmm. and that was a long time yeah and I couldn't really do it. I was nursing and all that. Mm-hmm. And um, luckily, you know, I have family that now that my daughters are older than now, I have family that they can come and help me so I can go away for a week or sometimes mm-hmm. two weeks to just meditate. Mm-hmm. And I find that is very helpful for me because it feeds my spirit. And when I, my spirit is, is feeling full, mm-hmm. it's much easier for me to be patient and much easier for me to be understanding and really, and to able to be in the space to ask my, my daughter, say, well, what are you feeling? Mm-hmm. And so I felt this component is also very important for parents as well. And so that's what I do to kind of try to bring that awareness and also discovery when I work with the parents one-on-one. Yeah. So it's interesting. I sort of want to cover the three things that you talked about in terms of challenge. One being time, two being like discipline and I'm imagining structure, and the third one about self-fulfillment and feeling a sense of loss. So in number two, the the challenge of discipline is that is there a relationship between that and structure as an example you know as i was being raised um i mean breakfast was at a certain time if it was the weekend lunch was at a certain time and dinner was at six always and if it was during the week and my father was going to be coming home late from work you know it'd be like 15 minutes late but you could pretty much count on dinner being at the same time every day Mm-hmm. So is that the kind of structure you're talking about? Yes, that's what I was talking about earlier about rhythm. Um, you know how we have four seasons. And in each season, we have a, this natural, in, you know, intuitive feeling on each season. You know, like in the summer, we're being drawn out more. We want to be out more. And in the, win- in the winter time, we naturally want to be more inward. And that's what the rhythm does is... If we could build a rhythm in the day, so there is some, I call it pressure or transition point, like getting Mm -hmm. up in the morning, Mm -hmm. and um, the other thing is meal time and bedtime. Mm -hmm. So these are the transition point that if we could build some kind of rhythm or rituals around it, in a lot of time, it makes the transition easier. And it also helped calming the children as well because when they when they know what the rhythms are, mm-hmm. they they expect it like you said, you know, 
six o'clock around that time block. Mm -hmm. I know this is the meal time, and you'll kind of slowly transition. Maybe in your family, Mm -hmm. what you do is you will start setting up the table, or maybe you put away your toys. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that you know that you will be doing and transition into meal time. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, you know, you will light a candle. Mm-hmm. Um, doing your meal time to kind of transition into having a meal together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it so feel- that's yeah, yeah. It feels like uh, it actually feels to me like almost like, in a sense, a tradition. Or um, there's another word I'm looking for. You know, with this rhythm you're talking about, it sounds like it, what happens is with children is that. They never get to this place of being hungry and going through that stress. Exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of expected that, okay, after I put things away, I will be transitioned into meal. So they they know the we all, it's like everyone in the family will, will be all synchronized with the rhythm. Mm-hmm. And then like, for example, if say today is Friday, Friday usually is a pizza day. <laughs> and then so they expect, they know that, okay, this is, we're going to have pizza for dinner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's another rhythm that one can build into their weekly. Mm-hmm. So for me and my family, it was sloppy Joe's. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Where it was. Yeah. I, both my parents have been gone for a number of years, but Friday night was sloppy Joe's. That, that really? was it. Oh yeah. It was fun. <laughs> Always could pretty much count on it. And then every once in a while, my mother would throw something in, and it wouldn't be sloppy joes. It would be breakfast for dinner. And it was just like, it was just fun. But you always knew Friday night there was going to be something, you know, it was going to be different. Oh, that's great. So I'm curious, like you had yeah. talked about, like, do you remember when you were a child having this rhythm, having this, you know, you you expectation you know what's coming as how does that i don't know if you can mm-hmm. remembering being a child mm-hmm. does that feel calm and grounded yes yeah it does it did it did i mean um as i think back about it i you know i think i probably experienced a slowing down in preparation as an example for you know dinner at 6 um and what was really interesting, I've, I told a friend of mine this not too long ago, is like my first experience with the divine was on, I don't remember what day of the week it was, but dinner was at six. And I got so intensely involved in playing baseball. And I, I did have a watch and I was probably eight years old. And I looked at my watch and it was 630. And I was a half an hour late for dinner. <gasps> Oh, yeah. And it was just like, am I going to get a whooping or what? You know, I'm, I mean, my parents didn't exactly whoop us, but, but it was uh-huh. just like I freaked out. And I remember, I mean, I remember this so clearly. I just stopped and I prayed to God that I wouldn't get in trouble. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little bargaining going on there. And, there uh, he is. <laughs> I got home probably, I don't know, 630, 640. And my mother simply said, oh, your father called and he's going to be late. We'll probably be having dinner closer to seven. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned me into a believer early on. Oh, wow. No, seriously. It was just like, you know, but I, you know, once again, I, I didn't miss dinner much because according to my mother, I was always a, I was always a ferocious eater. And, you know, for breakfast, it was two boxes of cereal. And <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I always had something to look for. It was very calming. That's how I remember it, you know. Yeah, and it also also sounds like meal time is really the time yes. for the, all the for your family to be together. Yes, in our yeah. family, I mean, I, I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say our family was like extremely really close, but our mm-hmm. dinner time was a time for conversation. Dinners always were like an hour, even longer. Mm. So we'd eat dinner, clear the table, and just talk. And uh, that's what I remember. Um, so it was a time to, you know. I guess today's standards, you'd say share. I mean, my mother didn't say, okay, Johnny, what do you have to share today? I mean, she, <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, they weren't of that mindset, but it just mm-hmm. sort of unfolded and it was a time yeah. to find out what was going on. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. I mean, your sharing had just really, you know, it, a lot of the parents who were in my class, you know, when we, there's one exercise we do is we call it golden moment in childhood. Mm. And this would be one example because, Mm -hmm. you know, as we are looking to 
how to go about navigate ourselves in this busy world. Mm -hmm. It's really not about how much stuff that we purchase or how mm. many things that we do or go to different places. It's really about these really simple moments, like being the family together, having a conversation and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meal that stays with us. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you say that that structure, wouldn't you say that that's been probably going on for thousands and thousands of years until recently? I, I actually don't know if that's true, but it just seems to me that with the advent of, quite frankly, technology and mobile devices, that's um, knocked that structure around a little bit. So there's no, there's no real stopping. So I, I agree. I mean, I don't know the exact... Mm -hmm. you know year but i think as the society shift us with the internet booming mm -hmm. there's a lot more after school activities and mm -hmm. sports organized sports and and the internet and the mobile device that just kind of take over mm -hmm. that um a lot of time these like you said this structure and the rhythm that it just kind of forgotten mm -hmm. number three you talked about you know one of the challenges, number three, being um, this sense of loss of self. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's self-fulfillment, self-respect. I'm just sort of curious because I challenge it a little bit only to say, and again, I don't really know, but it just seems to me years and years ago, um, there was really nothing lost. There was only something gained. But maybe it's because I mean, you have experience. I don't. So it's like maybe mm -hmm. the sense of life going so fast that it feels out of control. So there is a sense of loss of, quote unquote, control or self-fulfillment, you know, where maybe before it wasn't so crazy. And uh, the experience of raising children um, was more fulfilling in a sense. I mean, I don't really know, but I'd be curious to what your take on that is. Um. I feel like in the, from the parents in my class, most of them, some, most of them, they have a desire of wanting to, I guess, stay connected with their own mm -hmm. identity. Because a lot of time, um, similarly, like how you described how the world has become now. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be more of expectation or more noises about what should a parent do and what should a parent not do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that added additional pressure to parents that, you know, when you unconsciously trying to meet those demands and trying not to fall behind if you feel like your your child might be, you know, that your child needs to start learning I don't know, numbers or alphabets in daycare center if you need to um, while you um, having a nine-to-five job. And so all those juggling that it wasn't like this years back when farming was primarily the, the, um, the way how the living is. But nowadays, most of us are mm -hmm. working in front of a computer. So I think that completely has shifted and changed. Mm -hmm. And um, and the time, it just become very difficult to manage time. Like if you live in a, a lot of us live in suburb area and to mm -hmm. get to anywhere um, for appointments, sometimes you just have to budget half an hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that we didn't have to, you mm -hmm. know, most of in the in back years back. So the society and the living, the way we live now is very different. Mm -hmm. And so that create that the time is very precious. And how do we find that balance of still feeling that I am a, a great parent and and but also taking time to take care of myself, my own needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. That's a lot clearer. Things have changed so much that it's necessary for parents to do things to take care of themselves. I'm imagining that there was a time when that was not so necessary because people had what they wanted or they had what they needed. And, you know, people weren't, in a sense, um, 
in consciousness, the consciousness was at it in a place that um, um, required, or people, I should say, people didn't desire anything else like meditation, like self-awareness. Exactly. Um, they like, went, they, maybe yeah. they went to church and that was enough. I agree. I, that's another thing that I have noticing that as we move through different generation, mm-hmm. um, you know, in my generation, I feel there's more of a personal desire, mm-hmm. more so than my parents' generation. Mm-hmm. And in my parents' generation, it's exactly how you describe. My mom was perfectly content being a a full time stay at home mother her whole life. Mm-hmm. And she was really happy, and she was really happy just being there, and she didn't really have another need that she needed to, you know, for her whole own self needs to, you know, go see friends or having her own thing that it was not necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as we move to, I feel, starting from my generation, I'm noticing more of the parents, uh, my own friends, we have a stronger sense of individualism, and we started to have become more aware of we have a different desire, and that is different, mm-hmm. and it's separate from whatever roles we are, whether we, you know, being a parent or, and so that is different. I also think it's. Um People that know me know that I talk about this quite a bit, that uh, I think it's also a time for the empowerment of women. Um, I talk quite a bit about the sacred feminine. And, uh, oh, that's, that's another topic that I'm just so passionate about. Oh, as. really? Well, we can <laughs> yeah. certainly talk about it. Cause... I would love to, yeah, especially, you know, I have two daughters and I always, I just really... I have been really interested about and learning and and about embodying more of the sacred feminine wisdom mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and what that is for me and what that is for my, you know, the mothers and female friends um, because there is that wisdom and the power that is very different than the traditional masculine doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. type of energy. Mm-hmm. So tell me, I'm just very curious, who are your, or who or what are your influences in that? Who's influenced you or what's influenced you the most and informed you about what we call the sacred feminine? It's really through my meditation practices. Mm-hmm. I have become more aware of certain quality in me that is connected Mm -hmm. Um, and I have it's connected with this really soft feminine energy and I started realizing that I'm craving to learn Mm -hmm. more about everything in Mm -hmm. this area and I um, before I become a mother I was an engineer. I was working oh. in a mostly muscular, you know, mostly men. Mm-hmm. And I, it was a very different kind of uh, energy and a different way how I engage when I work as an engineer. Mm-hmm. And as I become a mother, I have noticing through my meditation practice that there is actually some kind of initiation that happened when I become a mother. It's almost like through the um, cultivation or through the, I call it cooking, through the cultivation of being, you know, pregnant, Mm -hmm. there is some wound wisdom that was being opened up. Mm -hmm. And in the wound wisdom, there is this, feminine sacredness that wisdom I'm starting wanting to it's starting kind of blossoming and Mm -hmm. I wanted to explore more Mm -hmm. yeah I noticed on your website you've got some quotes referencing Rumi but also the Lakota Mm -hmm. so I find a lot of um, I find a lot of um, sacred feminine I, I would say strength in Lakota teachings yes definitely because it's fairly well balanced. Would would you agree with that? 
I, I yes. Masculine, feminine, it's incredibly well balanced. I'd agree because I really feel like for for us, so being you know, mm-hmm. spirit being being in the physical body, being mm-hmm. in the physical world, we really need to bring both energies here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because we really need both energy to. It's almost like we. To me, my experience is is that it feels like when I can connect with my feminine wisdom in me and the collective wisdom mm-hmm. and then also connecting with that masculine then I can manifest and and really create in this physical realm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very nice very nice is there anything else you would like to talk about anything else um <laughs> no I feel like I have covered I think you have too bit. yeah it would be nice, you know, we've been restructuring and doing um, video blab interaction conferences, little mini conferences in a way to connect uh, a couple weeks after each podcast is released. It would be, nice be nice to do one with you. And there's some people I know that I could uh, contact to also just let them know what was going on because, um, yeah, it's a community out there. That's one way to connect once again. I would love to. Well, I'm going to wrap it up then. And uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? The best way is please go to my website, which is www.circleofchanges.com. Mm-hmm. And in on the website, there's uh, contact information and, and people can look at um, more information Mm-hmm. about what I do and what I offer. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. It's a very, very nice website. It's very simple. It's very clean. Easy to get the information that you've actually talked about. So. Oh, great. I'm, I'm glad. It's a labor of love. It took, it took me and the designer a whole year. <laughs> it's oh, yeah? a whole year project. Yeah. No, it's very nice. It's very yeah. nice. All right. Martina, thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you so much for, it was very, such a pleasure to talking to with you. Yeah, you're welcome. So I encourage people to go to alternativehealthtools.com, the podcast site, and we have show notes and we'll have links to Martina's website and just a few things that we've mentioned in this show. And of course, you can always get in touch with us there and check out what's going on with blabbing and uh, sign up to receive um, notifications when shows are released and also when we do a blab. So until next time, we'll see you later.